you get it entered automatically into their Rolex giveaway. Can you see that? Let's rate that. So I mentioned last week I was making some changes. I get better. Yeah. Also in a GJ short. So you just gotta be careful that's not what's holding you back. A plus two. So yeah, it's so good. 30 bags this month. What's going on everyone? How are we doing? It's Monday morning. Literally just took delivery of a new fridge because our fridge decided to die. Happy days, double shabam. Lovely, 900 bangers later. Not ideal, didn't really wanna to have to spend money on a fridge, but adult life, you know what it's like sometimes, it's how it be. Uh, it's unfortunate that he decided to die, but at the same time, I'm very grateful that I can just get a new one. So yeah, happy days there. Wicked, wicked gym session this morning. Uh, did a push session, feeling a lot stronger, feeling like I'm actually seeing real growth now, I'm trying to obviously eat more and actually build muscle after losing all that fat that I lost. If you're new to the channel, here's a picture of what I used to look like, here's me now. So yeah, on the journey, lost 20 kilos. Some people ask me how did I do it. Look, I didn't do any fad diet shit, I did calorie deficit, I did loads of steps, I exercised, and I just remained consistent, and that is pretty much it in all walks of anything you do. Anything quick fix, just like getting money quick, often ends in losing it. It's the same with fad diets. You might lose loads of weight quick, then you put it all back on. So yeah, just a tip there, like don't, don't be looking, as humans, we're always looking for that quick thing, right? And I think social media, TikToks, shorts, reels, have like led us down this path where our attention span's like not there anymore, we want instant gratification, but yeah, it doesn't exist. I'm gonna make a coffee, then take the big one out for a walk because I've been waiting in all morning for that. People asked me last week as well about funding pips. So I do still have that, I'll show you when I go upstairs later on. Um, I didn't like blow it up or anything weird. I just completely forgot to trade it last week. I traded it once, took a BE on it, and it is pretty much up like 100 quid. I've got all my accounts are on a copier, and it's so much easier, and then obviously I've got that which is on match trade. Again, funding pips don't like copy trading, but when I had it on MT5, it was just a case to get my phone out, hit the button. I still think MT5 is elite. Uh, obviously, C Trader is great. They do now have C Trader, so what I'll do is when I pass this, I will get it on to C Trader, and then I can do that. But yeah, hopefully get that passed this week. Obviously, I'll let you know how I get on with that. <laughs> just got back off a walk and I figured I would just jump on. I mentioned last week I was making some changes. Um, I have actually decided to go ahead with those changes purely based on the fact that I'll be winning a lot more frequently and I'll probably make more money at the end of the day. That ultimately is what matters. You know, it's not about um, trading the best way, the fanciest way or any of that shit. I don't, you know, I'm so over those things. You know, if you're still in that, then you're just, you're doing it for the wrong reasons in the first place. Um, so that also led me to actually reset my Darwin X. I'd started it previously on my edge that I was trading before. And through that period, I'd obviously gone through a couple of rough patches since sort of October. I had tweaked and changed my edge slightly. And obviously one for the risk engine to learn how I'm trading. It was kind of messing with the VAR and different bits and bobs. And also I figured it wasn't a direct reflection of how I'm actually trading. So it would do me a disservice if investors did come along. Obviously I've got to take... 10 trading days and I've got to take around 20 trades for the risk engine to obviously calibrate. That will then create the Darwin, that takes about a week, and then you can look to go for allocation. You know, it's just a case of get the trades down, it might take me a month or so. But I'm taking this a lot more serious now after some of the conversations I had with the guys the other day. Out on the EU long that I took up here, uh, and I've since re-entered, uh, I've gotten in on the external sweep of NFP lows. To be honest, the trade this morning, I knew there was a high chance we could have taking an FP low out, like I've said in many episodes before. However, I was happy to take the risk, so it's all good there. Also in a GJ short, so I wanna see if this can sort of let go, and then we'll see if EU's got the legs to sort of push back up. To be honest, I don't love the EU long. However, it's not about what I love, it's just playing the edge. It's Tuesday, I've just finished school run, and I'm on my way to Tesco's to get some food, because as I said yesterday, after the fridge fiasco, most of the food has gone. A little bit annoying because I'd literally done a food shop on the weekend, but like I said, not a lot you can do about it. I don't like throwing food away, but I'm not gonna eat food that's not right and then potentially make me ill or the kids ill or whatever. Um, so we go again. So I'm gonna go to Tesco, hopefully it's not too busy, but it's absolutely bouncing down here today with rain. So I need to get back as well. I need to take the dog out, although I have a dog that just doesn't like rain. Anyone else's dog not like rain? 
even if we get him a coat and that, he just won't go out. He'll hold his Wii and everything, even in the garden. He won't go out if it's raining. It's dead weird. I have to almost kick him out the door. Today's GJ trade ended up being a win, so that was nice. Nice way to start the week. And I am currently in an EU short, which I'll show you when I stop. Um, running, I think it was running like half a percent last time I checked it. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. Obviously, I have, like I said yesterday, I am tweaking the way I'm trading slightly. Purely from a standpoint of I can't ignore the stats and the data that I've seen from doing so. So I want to take that live fully now and see what it does for me because again, it's about you know optimizing for the best performance and obviously making the most money. I don't care about being the best trader and I don't care about how flashy what I do looks. I care about securing that bag. This year is the year of money for me, so I need to ensure that I'm capitalizing on all the opportunity that it presents. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. March is always a good month for me anyway, so I feel like it will make up for the, end, the the last two months. Not that they were awful, to be honest. Like, when I look back, January wasn't actually that bad, like a plus 4%. Feb was a bit rough. It was like a minus 5, so it basically wiped out Jan. But if you could say, like, basically a B for the year, and then I think for the March, I'm up like, I think I'm up like 3%. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes, and obviously, we'll see where we go. Obviously, I want to get some of these challenges lit up now and get them done, because they are just... They're not boring me, that's the wrong choice of words, but they're in a point where there's no upside to just being in challenges. Can you hear the rain, mate? Madness out here. I'm gonna get soaked. But yeah, anyway, so trade-wise, this is the EU short. We've got CPI in three hours. Obviously, remember people, it's daylight saving at the moment until the UK catches up, which will be the end of the month. Side men have got their own cereal called Best. I rate that. I love it when you see people on YouTube just doing mad stuff, bringing out all different things, mate. It's sick. What's your favourite cereal? Let me know below. Oh, it's horrible out there, man. Man, I just spent 96 quid. Jeez. I only bought fridge stuff. Oh, I forgot Squares bars. I'm devoed. I always have a Squares bar and a coffee. And I've completely forgotten to get Squares bars. Good morning, everyone. How are we doing? It's Wednesday. I'm short EU, long GJ. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Can you see that? Can you see that? Yeah, so I'm in an EU short, which is stinking up the gaff, and I'm in a GJ long, which is very, very close to TP. Like I said, I came back from an FTMO, I was 9% in drawdown, it's now plus two. So, again, you know, not having an ego and going, something staring me in the face. Like, the thing is, right, the way I'm doing things now, which is more like the one-to-ones, if you like, uh, with bigger stops, a lot of people won't be able to do that because their bias might not be that good or they might want more R. And look, if you're, if you're killing it, ignore me. Don't even worry about it. But what I can't avoid is the fact that, like, it's so good. <laughs> like, I can't avoid that. I can't ignore it. And when you run the numbers and you go over the numbers and you've seen it live and you're testing it, it's kind of... Bruno! Don't let dogs eat bottle lids. Um, when you're kind of going over it and you're testing it and you're seeing what it can do, it's kind of like, rah asking questions of things and asking myself, you know, why am I actually trading in the first place? And am I doing it from a place of, I wanna be the best trader, I wanna be fancy and show off these great things, or do I wanna just make money? And you know, the reality of it is for me, it's about, it's about making money. Obviously I bring everyone on the journey and I'm completely honest and transparent about everything that I do and always will be, but I wanna ensure that I'm capitalizing and I can't ignore what I've seen. So I just wanna to say to you guys, like if you've noticed something in your trading, if you've seen something, and you perhaps have an ego or you feel a certain way where people might think something or assume something or belittle you in some form of way, what you've got to ask yourself is what's better, catching a big trade and showing it off or catching a load of little trades consistently, winning more often and making more money. I know which one I pick and that's what I've started to go ahead with. So obviously I'll document you know, how that goes uh, but that was kind of the reason behind, you know, restart the Darwin X. It's kind of the reason behind, like, now these challenges are sort of, they're all in, this is what's helped me get out of drawdown. Um, I was like, you know what, let's just, let's just roll with it and see what happens. Do you know what I mean? So I'm excited for that. I'm feeling good. Thursday, I'm on my way to get a trim because man is looking like a microphone out here. It's crazy how, like, your hair can make you feel so different. I need to shave as well. Not that I've got much on the sides. This is like a year of premium growth. So allow me. But yeah, I can't grow a bit to save my life. But under here I can. I've got Alpha Capitals, about 1.5% from passing. Uh, really enjoying Alpha at the moment. Conditions seem really good. I've got an MT5 and a C trader. Link in the description for those guys if you want to check them out. Remember as well, if you do buy an account with them this month, you get entered automatically into their Rolex giveaway. 
So kind of a bonus, I guess. If you use code 20, you can save 20% off for the month as well, which is which is worth it. Um, those asking me about, do you get your refund from them for purchasing the challenge? You get it in the form of a bonus uh, when you get paid out. So you do sort of still get it back um, if you like. But yeah, obviously check those out. I've also got, obviously, Funded Engineer is about one and a half percent away from passing. And what else have I got? Um, Oh, funding pips currently up like 1.5 on that. It's going nicely there. You know, I'm on target. If I can get a decent amount live before the end of March, I'll be happy. I'm not trying to rush it, but at the same time, I do want to just kind of get these accounts live and start making some dough. Got a lot of things I want to do this year. One thing I want to highlight, you know, one thing I've noticed through my trading is really tracking like your maximum excursion and stuff and, and how far do your winners win, how far do your losers lose. You know, trying to find the balance and asking yourself the right questions. Like, if I was to just TP here, would I make more money? You know, these are the sort of things you need to ask yourself because there's a lot of you at home that are probably very profitable, but your failure to close trades in profit is what's holding you back. Like I've always said, losses at 1% add up. So wins at 1% can add up just as quick. Some of the best traders out there do just have a one-to-one -one risk reward. Some even have a negative risk reward but long term it pays off for them because again it's about making money stacking bags obviously you need a high win rate i'm not saying everybody's edge is built for lower risk rewards because it may be that you rely on higher but all i would say is make sure your ego is not at play make sure you're not doing it to try and show off or be the best trader online because the reality of it is i couldn't give a shit about all that for me it's about making money capitalizing on the opportunities in front of us diversifying that money into other things to make more money and growing that generational wealth it's not about, oh, look at me, I caught a 1 to 50. I've played my part in that before. It didn't serve me, to be honest, and it definitely messed my head up a lot because there's a lot of losses with it. There's a lot of unrealized profits given back. I remember seeing trades go 15, 20 grand in profit and then reverse and take me out BE. And I'm not going to lie to you, that's a long day. I don't come from wealth. Those numbers are still fairly large. So just something I want to really highlight again. You know, I'm trying to keep things really real here. I have no need to sugarcoat shit. I never do. I try and keep it honest. I try and keep it real. I try and be as transparent as I can because I think ultimately that's the most important thing. I know I have a form of influence and I want to ensure that I'm not clouding anyone's mind that I'm keeping it real at all times because there's a lot of shit out there and I think it's important to just, you know, be real. And I'm not saying I'm the only one. There are some others that do it. There are unfortunately not enough, but there will be. But I want to say big ups to all of you because I've had a few, I've had like five or six emails this week, um, you know, just say expressing gratitude and, and stuff for the channel. And it's sick to hear your stories, and it's sick to hear that the content's helping you. I just talk to a camera, uh, so it's always nice to hear. So I appreciate that, and I appreciate all of you in the comments and stuff. I did get an email. Someone asked me an important question about kind of going full time and, and balancing work and a job. Um, sorry, balancing trading and a job. I have addressed it before, but I feel like it's something I can address on here properly. So when I've got back from uh, my haircut and stuff, I'm gonna go for a walk and things with Steph, and then once I get a chance, I'm gonna pick up the camera and I'll talk about what I think about it. They've mentioned how they find that it's really difficult to sort of trade and work, and they feel like the job they're in is not the best and it's holding them back from trading and they want some advice. And I think it's a really cool topic we can chat about, discuss a bit further, give you my opinion, give you my thoughts. I've experienced it so I know how it feels, but obviously as always, you know, it always depends on your situation. But um, yeah, I'm gonna get this barnet chopped. The email up now, so I'm just glancing through it. But basically saying, you know, they're in a job that potentially doesn't or isn't the best of jobs. Obviously they need it, you know, for their bills and whatnot, but they're finding it's getting in the way of their trading. They trade lower time frame. You know, what do I propose they do? What I would say is, and I've highlighted this for a long time now, you know, going all in on trading this glamorous life that we're led to believe. I'll be completely real with you lot and I'll probably ruin some people's dreams. It ain't all that. It ain't gonna be fruit bowls in a swimming pool abroad, living the dream all the time. You can do that, but then you have to also come back to reality, right? Like, even when I'm away, I'll still trade because it's the job at the end of the day. Now, yeah, you can take time off, time out of it. You still need to like, let's say you make, let's say you make 30 bags this month, but then you don't make any money for four months. You then have to allocate that 30 bags for the next four months, right? If you then don't make any money for six months, that 30 bags, all of a sudden after taxes and everything, it starts to dwindle. And that's the self-employed life, essentially. There's no guarantee as such. Nothing's guaranteed in life anyway, even if you've got a job. But what I'm saying is like that, that getting used to that all of a sudden, I have a job, I get paid 3K a month for doing this. 
and then leaving that and going, I'm a trader, I could make 10K a month, but I could make nothing. It's a very difficult one to process and it can cause all kinds of emotions. Ask yourself two things. Can you find a better job that potentially pays you the same wage or more and allows you that free time to trade or to execute the trades? Number two is, could you actually afford to leave the job, tra take the risk of trading full time, have money behind you to potentially survive, but then you've got to be okay with say, say you had 20K behind you, what if you don't make any money in trading and that 20K runs out, then what? So you need a backup for that. And number three is, can you come off the lower time frame and find a way to maybe reduce the R? So let's say the 1M gets you 5R, but the 15M might get you 2R, maybe a better win rate, maybe filter some L's. Again, I don't know the system, so I'm just speaking from my own personal opinion, right? Maybe that 15M is the way where when you are at work, you can just whip, open your phone and go, right, 15 minutes. You know every 15 minutes the candle's going to close. Can I just look at my phone? Whereas at one minute, so much can happen in five minutes, you could miss it. So that would probably be my best advice. When you go full-time in trading, it sounds glamorous, it sounds sick, but it's actually very stressful. And you will find yourself making decisions because you need money. And that's a bad place to be in. Um, so... Yeah, don't do anything rash. Like I've always said, you know, think logically about this. If you could run a job side by side with it or another side hustle or a business. And then when you've made enough money from these, when your emergency funds bill, when you've got other investments, you could lose the job if you wanted to. But don't forget, trading's lonely as shit. And if you're at home all the time and you're not around anyone and you're used to that social interaction, it can be very difficult to adapt to that as well. So don't rush to want to be a full-time trader. Good morning, everyone. How are we doing? It is Friday and I'm just watching the charts. I am currently in an EU short. I don't love it, if I'm honest. However, having a bigger stop has kept me in for the time being. Um, I'll just show you on here for the moment. So, yeah, obviously much larger stop than normal, but covered all of this. Uh, one of the reasons for this, as I explained at the start of the week, is often I'm finding sometimes trades go without me because I want too much perfection. Secondly, sometimes they'll sweep me out slightly and go again too much perfection and I'm not giving enough breathing room and I'm getting the direction right way too often. Now, someone's going to pipe up, oh, get better, <clears throat> couldn't care less about you. Uh, at the same time, I'm maturing more as a trader and I'm starting to realise the amount of money that's in front of me and the opportunities and there's a lot of investments I'd like to kind of put things into as well. So I'm like, well, I need to start making that dough and trading as a vehicle for that. So I'll keep you posted over the weeks and months how this goes. Someone asked me last week, do you think edges or systems can kind of like diminish, if you like? And I said, I agree, I think they can. And I experienced it a lot to realize it can happen when everyone's trading in such a mechanical system. I definitely, definitely think there is something that goes wrong in terms of like alpha decay. Talk about it in like the algo world and stuff and investing, you know, how much alpha, how much capital can a system kind of manage before you start seeing it fail or incur slippages. And it's as if the market knows, right? Whether it stops above highs and lows, you can see them on certain brokers and things, right? They know where they can be, they can run them and then drop. We've all seen it back in the day, chocks, flips, all that sort of stuff was textbook. It worked amazing. And then all of a sudden it kind of took a hit and then you like adding traps and you're waiting for the chalk to fail to then get in. And, and all these different things happen based on this mechanical paralysis. Everyone wants to trade the same. And it happens with ICT. The only difference with ICT, there's a lot to it. So people pick bits they like and they don't like, right? Some struggle with discretion because you've got to make certain decisions. Everyone wants a mechanical rule-based system and checklist. But there are times where you do just need like that element of being a trader to make a decision. But I also think new data presents. There's something you've got to remember like, it's all well and good testing your edge and it being great prior, but you need to know how well does it perform now. And this is again where it comes into things like live trading. And I don't think you can beat just getting stuck in. Take the training wheels off, get stuck in, get humbled, get hurt, learn from it and go again. You know, I've been developing and crafting this edge for a while now. And it's come from a lot of triumphs and mishaps and, you know, messing up and whatnot and, and learning from that. But I feel like I'm in a, I've got an edge now that I could risk, I could have a large capital amount. And it wouldn't have a problem because of the bigger stock, because of the bigger breathing room, because the lot size isn't as big, all these different things. You know, only a couple of weeks back, I'm sort of, when I was trading just the 5M, same edge, but with the 5M entries, and I was having like five, six pip stops, I'm putting down 40 lots on 200K. Now, I know if the props ever change their rules or if anything ever comes in in terms of gamifying, they might think I'm, I'm gamifying or I'm cheating the system in some way or whatever. So that was a worry. I also know that, you know, on your own capital, 
sometimes you want to risk more than one percent you want to risk two or three the lot size thing could be a problem and not only that it's like do i want to be risking for example i've got a million in funding across the board at the moment so every trade to 10k right do i want to be risking 10k on being five pips pre precision and what i was getting back when i said earlier about coming into like the smc realms and that is that's kind of what i was taught that's kind of what i've really built my foundations off of and I've never explored the other side. And the other side is, what if you just had a bigger stop? How much more would you be right? Obviously, I've dabbled before with the 15 minute stuff. Like, but again, I went down the, let's make it smaller. Let's make it smaller. Let's squeeze as much R out of it as we can. Don't sleep on the fact that you may have something staring at you, but because your ego or your programming from those days says you've got to have a small stop, maximize your risk reward, that makes you a great trader. You just got to be careful that's not what's holding you back. And I've had success with both and I would never pick like, this is the way you should do it. This is the way you should do it. But I will always share my thoughts behind it because that's what it's all about. It's my journey and me sharing my findings. And I found that having bigger stops, 1 million percent increases my win rate and makes me more money. Now, it sounds mad, right? Let's say you were running a one to one. And you were like, yeah, we only made 1% there. I made five. Yeah, cool. But then you might lose seven trades in a row. I might win the next seven. So then I'm up 7%. You're down two. Do you see what I'm saying? That's the reality sometimes. And I think everyone's trying to be perfect or trying to be the best because they want to either validation. You know, a lot of the time where you've got to ask yourself, are you being sort of dragged from your past? Like something happened to you at school, childhood? Did you maybe not fit in? Were you maybe not the most popular or you didn't have the best stuff? So then... Now you're an adult and you're online and you want to be like, I'm the best trader. Look how much I've made. People are like, wow, yeah, sick. You know, I've realized over this journey of all the people I've helped and not helped and different things I've been a part of, no one actually cares. At the time, sick, but after a while, no one gives a shit. Someone else comes along or something else comes along and it will always be that way. And you're veering off track if you're not doing it for you and you're doing it for the wrong reasons, which is validation or being the best. I don't care about being the best trader. I don't care about people on Twitter lighting me up saying I'm sick. I care about making dough and, and making a better life for the family. So the reason I want to share it is because if you're in a position where you notice a lot of your trades, let's say, are always winning, but you're failing to take profit because you go, what if, what if, it could do more. It can always do more. I've had moves where I've got out of 20 pips, made a one to three, and it's gone and done 100. In hindsight, I'm like, oh, that would have been sick. I didn't know it was going to do that. So again, I can't sit there and be like, shoulda, coulda, woulda doesn't get you paid. So just something to remember. But yeah, we'll see what happens for the rest of the day. Um, I'm waiting for Seth to get home from the gym and then we're going to go for some lunch. Just like to do it now and then, like just go for some food, have a coffee, chill out, catch up, break up the day, break up the week. And then I'm going to come back and start editing this vlog because I'm in London tomorrow. So I need to get it done today. So you lovely people can watch it on Sunday. I'll pick something a little bit.